Hello there, everybody, and welcome to my channel, Victoria here at Radiant Moon Tarot. We are having a look at your 2024 forecast and predictions for all Scorpio, Sun, Moon, and Rising signs. Thank you. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to you. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm always grateful for your likes, shares, subscribes, your comments, and of course, all of your fantastic energy. So let's get right into your reading here. And if you do, by the way, find that you enjoy your reading, please do take a moment to help out my channel. Press that thumbs up button, hit that like button on this video, and if you do enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel as well. So let's have a look and see what we've got here, Scorpio, for you guys. So we have baby energy coming out here. Now, some of you maybe are starting a family, adding to your family, and you may actually have a little bit of a surprise, all right? So if you're not planning something right now, this is a very fertile time for you in 2024. So heads up for some of you there. But for some of you here, the baby energy represents newness, um, fertility, being born again. So some of you have been through the ringer in 2023. Um, we, of course, had a season of eclipses in your sign. So this can be where you feel renewed. You feel reborn throughout 2024. Great time to start new projects. Great time to... Um, you know, invent something or get creative in something in your life or really just embrace the energy of abundance and growth and expansion. Um, the baby card here out of this deck is card number three. Three relates back to the Empress card. And this is where we get fertility and growth and um, we get new beginnings coming in here and a lot of creativity as well. So great energy there for you guys. All right. So if you're not starting a family, maybe you are starting something new or you're feeling reinvigorated and more alive. What a great way to start the year. We have hearts coming out here for you as well. And I love that this has come out for you because I actually did uh, start the reading once already. And I did get a, a first card out already and it was the hearts card and then I have two new kittens and they're only like 10 weeks old and they jumped on my table and ruined my start of my reading so the hearts card of, has come out a second time so this is beautiful love in the air a healing of your heart um the heart energy is our power source right this is this is our heartbeat this is what keeps us alive this is what um keeps us in a high vibe this is our source of creativity our source of self, our source of love, and this is a great energy here for you. So amending a healing of your heart, an opening of your heart chakra, and the heart energy, of course, is where we feel happy. We feel good. So this is a, this is a year for you, or maybe you're focusing on the things that do make you feel alive, the things that do make you feel um, wonder and joy and all kinds of passion and love in your life. So do the things that you love connect with the people that you love and of course baby and heart well maybe some of you are falling in love or uh if you are already already in love and partnered up then yes maybe you are going to start a family and this brings nothing but happiness and joy to your world so it's a beautiful beautiful energy love is in the air love of course doesn't have to be romantic love love is the highest vibration of all and this is what is flowing towards you what's activating what's growing and this is what you are putting out into the world because you are part of the light of change we have archangel haniel coming in here with hope Beautiful energy. So, you know, again, some of you have been through a little bit of a tough time in the last year and maybe a little bit longer. You've been through some changes. You've been through growth. You've lost some things in your life. Maybe you've even lost yourself. And so this is a renewed sense of hope, hope for the future, optimism for the future, positive thinking. So if you're feeling a little bit down, a little bit lost, or if you're feeling Maybe even in some cases a little bit hopeless work with Archangel Haniel there for um, a little bit of restoration of that hoping space and um, positive outlook. So let's see what other messages are coming out here for you. We have Mindful and Groupthink. Netcaster. And we've got the moon made in with new beginnings coming in here. So you've got something manifesting in your life in the year ahead. 
um, that it's important to break away from the crowd. It's important to embrace your individuality here, Scorpio, and usually you do, right? But we all fall into the trap. So the mindful energy with group think shows that there is either an energy right now or something in your year ahead where you are probably going to be a little bit different than the crowd, than the people around you. Um, this is a heads up that your path forward, your path to success or change or following your dreams is to break away from the group think energy, to break away from the crowd, to break away from the herd, to be the little black sheep that you are not always um, uh, surprised to be, right? A lot of times you are that black sheep um, and it feels like you're a black sheep, but there's a reason for that, right? You're a little bit different than other people. And this is really embracing your own individuality. So in the group think energy, it's easy, <clears throat> excuse me, it's easy to get caught up in the news, mainstream media. It's easy to kind of go with the crowd, right, and not resist. You're being encouraged to be you, to be authentic to yourself, your goals, your hopes, your dreams. And regardless of what other people's opinions are, right, this is you being you. We have Netcaster with preparations coming to fruition, all right? So beautiful energy here. You have cast a net. You have, em you have embarked on a journey. You've um, created a spell. Some of you have been working very diligently on manifesting things into your life, and this shows that whatever net you have cast, whatever spell you have cast, whatever intentions that you've put out into the universe, things are coming to fruition for you in the year ahead. So whether that is love or money or career or perhaps even just growth in your personal self, your spiritual self, whatever it is that you have put out there, whatever it is that you are harnessing and attracting towards you, get ready. So be prepared. <clears throat> be prepared to take action. Be prepared to walk through a doorway. Be prepared for some wonderful changes ahead because everything is aligning for you. And we do have the moon maiden here. So uh, some moon cycles, the ebb and the flow of the world, of the universe. It's coming to fruition for you. New beginnings on the horizon. And we see that with the baby card anyway, right? So new jobs, new relationships new family members, perhaps, um, new creative projects, new endeavors, a new way of looking at things, a new way of existing, of being, whatever it is, there's new beginnings on the horizon for you in 2024. And that's maybe scary in some way, but also exciting. Now I'm looking at those three cards that just came out and I happen to notice something caught my eye. Mindful is card number 40. Moon Maiden is card number 41, and the Netcaster is card number 42. Now, there are 64 cards in that deck. What are the chances of 40, 41, and 42 coming all out? One, two, three, boom. There's something significant in that for you. Fours in and of themselves bring stability and security, especially around home, around family, around career. Four wheels on Four wheels on a car, four legs on a chair, right? They bring us stability. We have zero infinite potential or starting fresh. One's initiation, activation, energy, getting started, taking the first step or even taking the next step. Two's balance, harmony, partnerships, decisions. So some great things going on, a little bit of an evolution for you. Messages from your spirit guides, accept struggles as lessons. We sometimes rail at the fates when things don't go our way, or we rail at the fates when, you know, we think that life is just throwing us a million curveballs, and how come this keeps happening to me? <clears throat> Change your mindset away from the groupthink. Life is not happening to you, ever. Life is always, always happening for you. The struggles that we encounter, the roadblocks that appear in our path, they are all part of our journey and they are all part of something that 
builds us up, something that makes us stronger, something that brings wisdom, something that really does bring us a little bit more empowerment, even if we really, really, really have to struggle. So life is always happening for you. And when we change that perspective, that life isn't happening to you, things aren't just being thrown your way, right? The bad doesn't just happen to you because the good happens to you too. When we change our perception of that and change that into life happens for you, amazing things really do happen. It's almost like the power of positive thinking. The power of positive thinking doesn't always mean that everything is going to go your way, but it does change in how you deal with things. It helps you look forward to a solution. It helps you look forward to better times. It helps you deal with things in a more positive way. And ultimately, it helps you not be not be stuck. So accept all of your struggles in the present, in the past, and perhaps some in the future. Accept them as lessons. You gain that wisdom and knowledge. Have an attitude of gratitude. Yes, give thanks for everything in your life. And more things will come to fruition for you when we give thanks, when we give gratitude, even just for a few minutes a day, it elevates our vibration, elevates our energy, changes our outlook and perspective, and brings more things to be grateful for. So even the struggles that you've been through or that you may encounter, be thankful for them. Because why? Life is happening for you. Practice moderation. And this may be a year where maybe you are gaining some more stability and security in your world. Maybe you are laying down roots. Maybe you are really focusing on the foundation and building upon the foundation um, that you've already built in your life. And part of this, maybe some lessons that you've learned is things in moderation, balance and harmony in order to keep things in alignment, right? We do need to make sure that we're not doing things to excess. So practice some moderation, um, whether it's your eating habits, whether it's your home life balance, whether it's how you spend money, whatever it happens to be for you, moderation is the key to a healthy, happy life. And we have don't relinquish your power, very green, very connected with your heart space there. So your spirit guides are saying to you, you are powerful, you are strong, you are confident, you are wise, you are capable, you are mystical and you are magical. Don't give your power away. You may need it, need to in order to maintain the harmony and stability in your life. You may need to really put up some boundaries, whether it's with people or situations or just energetic boundaries whatever it happens to be, when we don't have boundaries and we let people walk all over us or overstep those boundaries um, or we're a little bit wishy-washy, right, then we are giving our power away. So this is a year of empowerment for you. This is a year where you can really step up your game a little bit and really be that confident, beautiful self that you know you are. So whatever situation is, right, remember, don't relinquish your power. All right, I'm not going to take that because that was just a slip of the finger. So we're going to pull some tarot now. We're going to pull one card for each month out of the year, starting with January. And we're just going to get some highlights for you for the year ahead. Okay, thank you very much. Well, that's the same card, so those, those really want to come out. Um, so that will be your January energy right there. We've got the Nine of Wands and the Seven of Wands. The Nine of Wands putting up. Um, putting up some boundaries, right? Recognizing um, where you, you know, do need to kind of put your foot down, draw your line in the sand, or recognizing what is draining your energy. And the Seven of Wands is taking back your power. Beautiful. So we've got February, Ten of Coins. Oh, I love that. Nine of Coins. Great start to the year. Page of Cups. Queen of Cups. Knight of Swords. So some of you are getting some sort of message um, in regards to your money, in regards to love. The Page of Cups, <laughs> Page of Cups surprise. Okay, some of you may have a little bit of a surprise coming your way. Um, this can help you build a happy home, a happy family. This could be love. This could be some creative inspiration here. This can be a little bit of spiritual awakening or spiritual growth. Uh, something there, but Page of Cups. Uh, uh, quite often is associated with a surprise, 
pregnancy, perhaps like, hello, hi, how's it going? Um, and uh, so this can be something But some of you could um, meet somebody and surprisingly shocking to you, you may just fall head over heels in love. And this is a little bit of a departure from something that maybe you've been working on. Um, but I do feel like there is some beautiful, beautiful energy there for you. We do start out with taking your power back, right? So let's keep going. Um, let's keep going. So now put us in about July. We've got the five of coins in reverse. Okay. Challenging card, the five of coins, right? But it is in the reverse. So it is up, uh, it is, um, making some improvements there. We've got the wheel of fortune. Okay. So something changing, shifting, temperance coming in. <clears throat> Ten of, uh, two of wands, excuse me. Strength card. And we've got the six of coins. I would say the overall climate of your reading is actually really good. Um, at the bottom of the deck, we've got the three of wands and three of wands is pretty much what we were already saying at the beginning of your reading is um, getting things in alignment, making some decisions, figuring out what you want and taking some inspired action or waiting for the right opportunity. So I do feel like there's some doors opening for you if you're looking for some change, expansion, some growth um, in your world in some way. So get excited and be prepared. All right. Be prepared for some action. But we do have January here with both Again, the nine of wands and the seven of wands. So uh, there's the nines are about completion, seeing something through to the end. And with the seven of wands here, this could be the end of letting people walk all over you. This could be the end of a project or a journey. You're a little bit tired. You need a bit of a break. Okay, so just uh, remember that. And when we have the nine of wands with the seven of wands, right, the seven of wands, we turn around and we face our challenges. We overcome challenges. We put up boundaries, right? We stand our ground and we stand up for ourselves or maybe other people. So in this energy here, I do feel that January is a month of empowerment for you. This is an opportunity for you to really um, make some positive change. This is a time for you where you might have a couple of things that you're dealing with um, in your life, but you will overcome them and it's because you're feeling a little bit stronger than you were before or you are taking your power, taking your mojo back. So you might want to um, <clears throat> remember that um, in order to uh, have balance and harmony in our life, we do need to sometimes take a little bit of a break and you could be encouraged to do that now instead of saying yes. To everything, right? It's time to say no to a few things, all right? But I do feel here that there's something here where you're wrapping something up, you're, com you're getting a conclusion that you want. And sometimes when we get the Seven of Wands energy, especially when we've got the Nine and Ten of Coins coming out right after that, you may really be able to set the wheels in motion, if you haven't already, to get yourself some more money. Now, whether this means uh, going into your boss's office and standing up for yourself, advocating for yourself and others for equality, um, honest days work for honest days pay, a promotion, um, you know, writing some imbalances, whatever it happens to be, or even you taking the bull by the horns and going out and finding a new job, a new career path, whatever it happens to be for you, there isn't a huge element of success. Right here, the nine and ten of coins is success and abundance and living in the lap of luxury, so to speak, whatever luxury looks like to you. This is where we have a sense of accomplishment, a really good sense of self. Things come to fruition, things wrapping up in pretty much exactly the way we had intended, the way we wanted. So big, big yes cards coming in here. So the first three months out of the year, I feel might be a significant turning point for your money, for your career path. Um, even for taking back control of your finances, some of you may have some finances, some money investments, things coming to fruition. But the Ten of Coins is the epitome of abundance, um, especially in our physical world. Um, happy home, happy family, happy bank account, stability, security for the long term. But it is also one where some of you may perhaps get something handed down to you. It can be a card of inheritance something through generations. So there may be something that is passed along to you. Now, this could be something in your family, right? Maybe some inheritance, um, hopefully a living inheritance, a little bit easier to deal with. Um, this can be something to do with your house, right? Maybe someone gives you some great financial advice, something like that. But this can also be something in your career, 
where something is passed down to you, you inherit something. And so you could have somebody in your, in your um, workplace that retires. And instead of hiring externally out of outside the company, the seven of wands, you go in and you say, you know what, I'm the right person for that job. And with the nine and 10 of coins, you just might get it. And I feel that if you get a no, some of you may uh, go out and find something else because it empowers you to go and find something else. But I think here that for some of you, you may have some sort of promotion or something that is coming down the pipeline for you. You likely already know, but it could also be a little bit of a surprise. But a lot of abundance, a lot of great things going on with your money, your home, even just your sense of self and feeling more um, independent feeling more confident and, of course, more empowered. But we do have the Page of Cups and the Queen of Cups. So this can be some spiritual growth coming in here for you. And this would put you in the spring. Now, in the spring, we do have Eclipse Season coming in here. So this can be the result of that. You could have some things coming to fruition that you've been manifesting. But the Page of Cups, the Queen of Cups, boom, big old spiritual growth there for you. Um, really pay attention to your intuition. But it also speaks to your heart, to your emotions, to love, um, creativity, all of those things. So the Page and the Queen of Cups, you could be Yes, yeah, starting a family, okay, you could have some growth in a romantic relationship. Some of you might be meeting someone new. You could even meet a new friend or partner up with people here. The pages do quite often represent children. Um, and like I already said, the page of cups can sometimes be a little bit of a surprise. So someone may surprise you with something, someone you already know and care about, or yes, you could be having a little bit of an addition to your life, whether it's just a person, a friend, maybe even a business partner, right? So we do have some money focus here. Um, whatever it is, very, very positive energy for you. A lot of love in the air. We do have a Knight of Swords here. And remember, time and energy is fluid. Okay, um, one month can roll into another, things can speed up, things can slow down, it just depends on your personal situation. But the Knight of Swords usually does bring in some messages, some news, some information. So yes, you could have some information coming in. Um, and it can be very exciting, I feel, here in this energy. Um, but the Knight of Swords can also represent um, taking some action. Because the Knight of Swords is like very action oriented, very quick moving. Um, so you might need to, something may be evolving really quickly for you. Again, you might get a little bit of a surprise um, or you might need to make um, a little bit of a very important and very quick decision. All right. So listen to your intuition in that and try not to do anything too, too impulsive. But it doesn't feel, it doesn't have an impulsive feel about it. Okay. It's got a, like, it's got more of a thing about, Oh my goodness, this is the opportunity I've been waiting for. This is what I wanted. I've got to share this. I've got to do this. I've got to act upon this. And that's kind of what it feels like in the energy. So overall, we've got a really good um, first half of the year for you. Love and success and abundance and people and surprises, but all of these wonderful things coming in. That's why we're taking back our mojo. We're putting up those boundaries and uh, really feeling good, really feeling confident. So it's great energy there for you. Now we do in July get into the five of coins. Now considering the great energy we've had for the first half of the year, the five of coins could be where, you know, perhaps you are needing to practice a little bit moderate moderation in your money. Now the five of coins in the upright is typically a lack mentality, a loss of money, right? Or, you know, not seeing your way forward, feeling left out. It's a lack mentality in here as well. You might have some unexpected bills, that kind of thing. All right. But in the reverse, okay, this can be disaster averted. This can be where you are willing to um, willing to and you find different opportunities for yourself. It can be something where you do shut the door on something or say no to something, but you're a little bit more empowered to it. The five of coins can be an improvement in your money and finances. Maybe you buy something and, you know, even though you're forking out money, you actually gain something from it. Um, so you could be buying a house or, you know, something like that, right? Or maybe you're looking for a little bit of change. 
All right, so it's just a little bit of a heads up there for you that if there is something of lack or if there is something that's lost or something where you do need to look for a different way of doing things, this is being open and being willing to change, which is actually a really good thing because your first, first, first major energy coming out is the Wheel of Fortune, and this puts you right about August, so uh, something going on here in the summer, and the Wheel of Fortune, of course, does bring about um, change, but it's change for the better, right, in the upright, and so it reminds us, the Wheel of Fortune, of the ebb and the flow of life. Sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down, so even though there might be a little bit of a down patch with the Five of Coins, I feel it's something that you're not going to let keep you down forever. You're going to be a little bit more positive and optimistic in your outlook of something that's going on there, and this can really bring about some really good changes for you. So in the ebb and the flow of life, things may go down a little bit, but then they turn right back around again, and this could be very much about your attitude towards things, all right? But the Wheel of Fortune does bring about faded events. It brings good karma to you. It does bring about positive exchange, uh, positive change, um, good fortune, good luck, expansion, growth, all those wonderful things. Okay, this can be where things come into alignment for you. But when we get the Wheel of Fortune, because it is like, boom, a shift in the cycle, sometimes we feel a little bit uncomfortable or sometimes we do need to let go of something in order to move forward, right? And, you know, so sometimes it can feel a little bit uncertain or chaotic. So keep moving forward, keep pushing through because we do have some healing energy that's here for you as well. And this is about September-ish and this is the temperance card. So number one, your angel spirits guides are very much by your side with this card. This can be where you do need to, instead of, you know, despair, which can sometimes come in with the five of coins, perhaps this is where your hope and your faith is restored. And it's because you are keeping that positive outlook because you are trying to stay positive no matter what. But the temperance card brings about healing and peace, forgiveness, brings about balance and harmony, but also does represent a little bit of alchemy in your life as well. So this can be where there's something where the wheels have already been set in motion, and this is where things are starting to play out for you or come to fruition for you. All right, but it can be a surprise. The Wheel of Fortune can bring in a surprise, but with the Temperance card right there beside it, um, it feels like this is leading you down the garden path to something enlightening, something wonderful, and something that maybe does restore a little bit of peace to your world. We've got the Two of Wands coming out here, and remember, we've got the Three of Wands at the bottom of the deck. So the Two of Wands is about having an idea, feeling inspired, figuring out what you want, um, recognizing an opportunity, and this is you making a decision and making a firm decision. You're looking out into the horizons. You're seeing the possibilities. The five of coins, sometimes we need to be a little bit more open to see some possibilities or to kind of, you know, take something in a different direction. And the two of wands, boom, anything, um, you know, our path forward is clear and we maybe even get a little bit more clarity. So this can be a beautiful energy right there, clearing something out and um, expanding our uh, potential, expanding our minds, expanding our opportunities. And then as we come out to the end of the year, November, December, right, we've got the strength card here. We've got the six of coins. So this is beautiful. The strength card speaks to your inner strength, your confidence, your courage to persevere, to keep moving. So maybe you do have some changes that you want to make there. Um, so the strength card can really um, be you feeling very much empowered, feeling really good, recognizing the unlimited potential that you have or recognizing opportunities. The strength card does also so bring about some calm, patient energy, some kindness and compassion. So um, this can be you really trying to um, maintain some harmony there between being bold, being um, courageous, right, in your energy, right, being strong, but also recognizing when you do need to be a little bit quieter, a little bit calm, and it's a little bit of discernment that could come in here, but strength card is a beautiful energy. There may possibly be a Leo person that you're dealing with around that time, but of course, November, this is around your birthday, right? So what better card to have than the strength card? Feeling good, feeling empowered, feeling strong, feeling confident, feeling, um, you know, like even if not everything is the way you want it in your world, you know in your heart of hearts that you have the power 
to turn things around or get to where you want to get to. But we do have the six of coins coming in here as well. So the six of coins can be something where balance is restored. This can be where there's a gift coming your way and it's December. Okay. So yes, you can have some gifts coming your way. Um, and something really wonderful with the strength card and the six of coins, because the six of coins can be a part of charity, right? The energy that we put out flows back to us multiplied. So this can be where you are being practicing a little bit of kindness, where you might be giving back um, to people. Maybe you're helping people that you know, maybe you're giving back to some charity, you might be donating some money or maybe giving the best gift of all, which is time, right? And you do get some reward back for that. Um, maybe your reward is just feeling good, feeling like you've um, helped others, who are maybe less fortunate for you or maybe who have been in, who are in a position that you've previously been in. So, you know, you have a little bit of empathy, you know exactly what they're going through. But in this does give you that warm, fuzzy feeling back. But the six of coins is where we can, um, you know, maybe get a little bit of money, a bonus, a raise. This is where we might get some investments coming to fruition, something maybe gifted to us, or maybe we even find something on sale and it feels like a gift. But this is a wonderful energy. So gifts, gifts changing hands is a circulatory energy with the six of coins. What we put out flows back, right? And this can be something fi um, financial. This could be help. This could be advice, uh, something positive, though. And it may even be a bit of a surprise. So we've got some great, uh, great things going on there. So I do feel that you do have some wonderful things in your year ahead. Now I'm going to pull out um, a few cards here for love because we do have love in the air for you guys. Okay, and then we're going to pull out some, uh, see where your magic lies in the year ahead. And I'm going to pull out some angel numbers for you guys as well. So uh, let's just pull out a few cards quickly for love. Ooh, thank you. Flying out of the deck, we've got this could be the one. We have flirt. <laughs> Children, hey, there you go. Um, and we have make the effort coming in there for you as well. All right. So, yes, some of you are meeting someone new in the year ahead. So keep an open heart, keep an open mind. And this may hit you out of the blue with that page of cups. You're focused on your money, you're focused on your career, or you're just focused on your family, you're focused on your home, right? Especially with that nine of coins there. And you're single and independent. And then, wow, boom, love walks in. Because quite often, when spirit sends us love, and I do feel it's a spiritually guided connection there, when spirit sends us love, it sometimes does um, come in as a little bit of a surprise. Often, when we're least expecting it because we've taken our focus off of love and we've put it somewhere else. And what happens when we do that? We relinquish control and we no longer have energetic blocks in that situation. Right. And you hear that story over and over and over again. Right. I, I you know, I was desperate for love. I was looking for love. And finally, I gave up on love. I decided to focus on myself, my career. And wow, that's when I met the person of my dreams. Because we've removed the control, we've removed that obsessive energy from that. So just keep that in mind. But we do have this could be the one. So yes, some of you you are evolving in some relationships here. Flirt, keep some energy lighthearted. We can restore some love and romance in our current situations there as well. Yes, we do have children and make the effort. So you know, relationships can require some effort. Yes, they can. They're not always easy peasy. All right. But make the effort because it's worth it. Okay. But yes, you do have perhaps children that are coming into the mix there for some of you. So you might even meet somebody that has children if you don't already have them. Okay. Or your children, if you've got them and you're looking for love, your children are certainly a um, factor in who you choose for a mate, right? You don't want, you don't necessarily, if you've got kids, you're probably not looking for somebody who doesn't like kids, right? That's probably not going to go your way. And so um, let's see what else. So we're going to see what magic you are embracing and activating in the, your head Put that to the side. There we go. And we've got financial health. There we go. Confirmation. Okay. So your ability to get your finances in order, have some um, monetary growth somewhere, get a new job or get that raise that you're looking for. But your financial health, this is where part of your magic 
growth, right? It's a tree, okay? Maybe something that's coming to fruition for you, some investments coming to fruition. You might have new ones, right? So all of this financial health, part of your magic in the year ahead. And again, we already see that. We also have inspiration, beautiful, right? Because you may be feeling a little bit more passionate or inspired about things. This, you know, the part of creating something is feeling inspired, feeling um, this fiery energy about it. So I think something you might be finding new sources of inspiration. You might just be feeling a little bit more hopeful and inspired in the year ahead. But part of your magic here is to maybe inspire others or again just do what inspires you do what lights that fire in your soul in your belly do something that you're passionate about and this can certainly bring you happiness and joy all right and we also have empowerment there you go theme running through your reading for your year ahead your ability to take back your power to be confident in situations that maybe you previously weren't feeling all that confident about, right? So you are empowered in the year ahead to make change, to stand up for yourself, to do what excites you, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful energy there for you. All right, let's get some more messages out here. We'll get some angel numbers for you and see what they have to say. There we go. Thank you very much. And your first one, we've got number 26. I am tactful. You have a desire to succeed and will feel most accomplished when your work benefits others. Your intuitive awareness of what people want allows you to come up with innovative solutions to meet their needs. I am tactful. Two, six, number 26, watch out for those. We've got double zero coming in here. We already did have a little bit of a zero there. So a lot of uh, cycles in your life, right? Um, a lot of um, infinite potential and recognizing that, all right? That infinite loop, okay? Um, zeros are where we can wipe the slate clean and start fresh, but they are never ending right? Infinity. So harness the power, harness the infinite abundance of the universe. Um, angels ask for your attention, open your eyes, listen and think about everything that is happening. Trust your intuition and follow their guidance without delay. Focus inward through meditation and prayer. I am observant. Keep your eyes open. And we have 28. I am a leader. In an effort to accomplish great things, you recognize the value of working with others. You make a capable and compassionate leader who can bring people together and drive a team towards achievement. I am a leader. All right. So, yeah, maybe you are going to step into some important pivotal role somewhere in someone's life. I'm going to leave that there for you, Scorpio. I hope there was something here that resonated with you. Um, if there was, again, please do um, press that thumbs up button. Hit that like button there. Um, it does help the video get seen. It helps my channel. I thank you so much. Free for you. Very important for me. And if you do enjoy my content, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you hit the notification bell, in theory, you will always get notified when I post something new. So I hope you have a wonderful 2024. Check out uh, additional content on my channel. But I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later.